Over the last couple of months, the female lead of Aquaman has made the news on and off, as more and more evidence has been put forth to indicate that all the things she accused the Pirates of the Caribbean star of having done, she was the one ultimately guilty of. Contrary to what she has been saying for years, the new evidence pretty conclusively indicates that she was always the instigator and escalator of any row. She was the one who was both physically and mentally abusive, and after the fact. She was the vindictive one, hell-bent on destroying him and his career, abusing the Me Too and Believe All Women hashtags to that end. Oh, and she squatted down and took what in not so many words was described as a sizable dump in his bed. And what about him? What did he do? It appears that for the most part, he was humble, calm, and took it all. And then, when he was driven further and further up the wall from her consistent and never-ending abuse, he would lose his cool and sometimes respond to her screaming with screaming of his own. And that's about it. She had to use makeup to create the impression that he had actually laid a hand on her, and for that, she could, at the end of a long chain of court events and rulings, face three years in jail. Though I'm inclined to believe that if we get to that point, some battery charges may be included as well, which could further add to that sentence. All of this, though, is beyond the scope of this video. Many others have already covered, in great detail, who is accused of doing what. So as usual, I will approach this from another angle, namely, why would she do all of this, and why did he let this happen? In this editorial then, I will begin by establishing why those who want to see her removed from Aquaman 2 are not contributing towards cancel culture, before exploring the possible reasons why she acts the way she does, and what I'm sure many are wondering, why did he allow this? He is, after all, bigger and stronger. Finally, I'll give my thoughts on what we all should take away from this. On the internet, there are some great defenders. People who see themselves as a cross between Batman and Jesus, who will instinctively jump to the defense of anyone who is ganged up on. Problem is, these great defenders more often than not have the world clearly divided between who they deem to be good and who they deem to be bad. And when someone they deem to be bad says something out of line, they will cast the first stone and demand them cancelled in the court of public opinion. But when someone they deem to be good is busted, they will jump to the defense. In this case, the only possible defense is don't speak ill of her, no matter what she might have done, because, because then you are contributing to the very cancel culture that you want to see ended, so there. Don't fall for that false logic. Cancel culture doesn't apply here. She hasn't expressed an unpopular opinion on Twitter. What we're dealing with is someone who, by all outwardly appearances, is a criminal. For now, this is just a libel lawsuit over money. But depending on how that goes, a public prosecutor could very easily get involved. And that is when she could be facing multiple criminal charges and several years in jail. It's not looking good for her, because the entire story she has been maintaining for years has been dismantled, down to every last detail, and there are no extenuating circumstances. So in this case, feel free to root for both the end of cancel culture and of her career, because there is no contradiction between the two. With that established, let's move on to how she got herself into this mess. And then I'm not referring to the mess she left on his bed. Based on the leaked audio tapes, there can be no doubt about it. She is an abuser. A domestic abuser. It is a criminally underreported problem, but by all accounts, for every male abuser that beats his female victim black and blue, there is a female abuser that mentally demolishes her male victim and often leaves him in financial ruin to boot. A female abuser is no better than a male abuser, 
They are both equally vicious and evil. They just use slightly different means to the end of subjugating and destroying another human's life. Generally speaking, male abusers will throw in an element of psychological abuse into their predominantly physical abuse, while female abusers will throw in a physical element into their predominantly psychological abuse. But in principle, they are the same. Listen to the leaked audio. It's out there on the internet. And Google the signs of a mental and emotional domestic abuser. Every single one of those articles could have been illustrated with her picture. So, what's wrong with her? Because something is. She is not what you would call normal. Normal people do not exhibit the kind of persistent, aggressive and manipulative behavior that she does. And normal people do not thrive on conflict the way that she clearly does. The leaked audio made it pretty clear that whenever he tried to de-escalate or back away from a fight, she wouldn't let him. As it turns out, she has a documented history of abusive relationships behind her, in which she was always the abuser, so there is a pattern here, which points to a mental condition, albeit one that has yet to be diagnosed. This is often the case with abusers. But what of him? Many have pointed out that she is a tiny woman, and he is bigger and stronger than her. So why has he put up with this? There are actually two sides to this. First of all, people like her are master manipulators, so they don't show their true colors right away. To begin with, they will spot whatever hole their intended victim has in their psyche. Because everyone has that. Everyone is missing something. And then they will shape themselves to fit that hole and love bump their intended victim, thereby casting a, let's call it, a sweet love spell. Elon Musk came pretty close to falling under that for a while there as well. This love spell will cause the intended victims to ignore the red flags that there are and carry on forward getting more and more invested. And then the abuse starts. Little by little, so like a frog in boiling water, the victim doesn't realize what is happening, as their defense mechanisms are plucked away one by one, until it's too late. And then the victim is screwed, even more so if the victim is a man and the abuser a female, like in this case. Then it doesn't help that he is bigger and stronger. On the contrary, that is what makes him utterly powerless. If he should snap and actually lay a finger on her, then all the years of abuse he had to endure leading up to it will mean nothing. In that moment, he is the abuser, and she will have the bruise to prove it. Then he is screwed. His story won't be believed, as the courts are rigged in her favor, and so is the court of public opinion. In no small part, thanks to social media and movements like Me Too, Time's Up, and Believe All Women, male victims of female domestic abusers have never been in a worse place than they are right now, and both the abuser and the victim know it. She even told him as much in the leaked audio. No one will believe you, Johnny. Look at me, how tiny I am. No one will believe you. And you know what? No one did. He never snapped, so she had to resort to makeup to falsify accusations against him. And no one believed him. At least, not at the time. Falsifying that evidence is what could cost her three years in jail, pending a criminal investigation and trial. But that's now, after more evidence in his favor has come to light. Back then, he, the victim of domestic abuse, was found guilty of it in the court of public opinion, and Hollywood effectively ended his career because of it. While she, the abuser, was celebrated as a stunning and brave survivor. She was named a human rights champion for the Stand Up for Human Rights campaign by the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights. 
On top of that, she was made an American Civil Liberties Union ambassador for women's rights with a focus on gender-based violence. Oh, the irony. Had it not been for the leaked audio recordings showing otherwise and turning the tide, she would always have been celebrated as a hero in the fight against domestic abuse. While he would forever have been done for and smeared some more every time she made a new speech about what she had to endure from him. Well, we know better now. Warner should absolutely fire her from Aquaman 2, and more importantly, both the UN, the ACLU, and every other organization she spoke either for or to should publicly wash their hands of her, because they all believed her and let her dupe them into celebrating a domestic abuser. Did you believe her? Abuse is always wrong, whether it's perpetrated by a man or a woman and the perpetrator should always be punished to the fullest extent of the law. There is research to indicate that female domestic abuse is as prevalent as male domestic abuse. The latter just isn't nearly as visible, nor taken nearly as seriously. Against that backdrop, movements like hashtag believe all women may have unintended side effects, as they encourage you to believe anything a female abuser will say to further destroy a male victim that has escaped his abuser. This particular case is a high-profile one, where the truth came out. If you believed her, if you ever condemned him, either out loud or internally, know that you sided with the abuser against the victim. You feel good about that? You shouldn't. I hope you will learn not to be so quick to judge in the future. Next, ask yourself, how many other such cases are there, out there among normal people? How many victims have been unfairly condemned as abusers, because everyone sided with the actual abuser? That is why every claim and every allegation should be taken seriously and fully investigated so the truth can be arrived at. But no one should decide in advance that any one gender is always truthful just because a social movement says so. That will unravel at some point. Case in point, for years, Alyssa Milano has been a staunch advocate of refusing to survey the available evidence in each accusation and instead mechanically adopt the position that accused men are always guilty right up until someone she politically agreed with was accused. Then, out of the blue, due process suddenly became a thing, and this accusing woman should not be believed. That's hypocrisy, and Alyssa Milano just undid everything she's been advocating for for years. The only takeaway from that is that due process should never have stopped being a thing. Believe investigating and believe evidence. Let me know your thoughts on all of this in the comments.